On the screen with me is a thread from the WordPress subreddit. The original post was added nine months ago, and the title is Any Plugin to Make a Site Fully ADA Compliant? Question mark. I wanted to go through this original post because the questions are quite typical of the questions that people have. And then also some of the, I wanted to respond to some of the comments because there is some good information, but there is also some bad information. And then some comments uh, confuse things. So I wanted to go through and unravel this. I think this is going to help a lot of people who have questions about making a WordPress website or any website ADA compliant. Um, so starting with the original post, the person writes, a company I work for got slapped with a lawsuit for not being ADA. They asked me to fix that. I am looking for an easy way to become ADA compliant without having to worry about redoing a whole website. I've never done this before. I know there are plugins, but does having a plugin make you compliant? So first, a thought on the situation we find ourselves in. We have a company who is delegating an entire project to make a website ADA compliant to one person who has never done this before. This is completely unrealistic. And I actually talked about this same scenario in a video um, I posted a few days ago. So I will link to that in the description. But for now, onto these questions. Is there a plugin to make a website ADA compliant? No. Um, is there a software? Is there an app? No, there's no automated means uh, there's not, no automated way of making a website ADA compliant. Um, and then I'm looking for an easy way to become ADA compliant. Uh, yeah, that's quite typical. People want to find out, is there a way that I can just take care of this by um, purchasing a plugin or an app? Uh, there's not. And then he's, the person writes, without having to worry about redoing an entire website. Well, with remediation, you typically, you're not going to have to redo the entire website. You would have to fix certain accessibility issues. Um, there are only a few instances in which I would recommend a rebuild. And so that could include when you are using outdated technology. So the website's just really, really old. Um, there are so many accessibility issues. It's probably worth rebuilding rather than trying to fix everything one by one. Um, and then and or you're looking for a value add to your project. So the way that you add value is, OK, let's say that you weren't going to you weren't going to rebuild your website before, but you've decided now that you're working on accessibility, you may as well take care of some other things so you can get some real value in modernizing your website, updating your website, updating the look of your website um, and using updated technology um, through an ADA compliance project. So that is something to consider there. Uh, because you can have all of these additional things come with the accessibility. Uh, but that is my response to the original post. And then so looking through the comments, there are so many comments and they get lengthy. So I'm only going to comment on a few of them, but I think these will help um, in people in understanding uh, WordPress accessibility and then just ADA compliance in general for websites. Um, someone writes, ADA compliance requires intentional decision making throughout the design and functionality of an entire website. No plugin is going to be able to provide that. Are there plugins that can help? Sure. But the important part is becoming educated on the intent and implementation of the guidelines and hiring someone and or hiring someone to help ensure compliance. Um, so sourcing work to third party providers is certainly a good idea initially in the beginning when you are still working on understanding accessibility yourself. Uh, but you need to be careful that you are not educated by the people who are selling you because they may may sell you something like a plugin or an overlay widget. Um, and by the way, I do. Um, it is important to distinguish the two. So with a plugin here, especially given that we are in the WordPress th subreddit, we are thinking about specific WordPress plugins that can help with certain aspects of accessibility on WordPress. With a widget, we are talking about something else altogether. This is going to render superficial adjustments over the website. So some of these widgets may come in plugin forms, but these are not the plugins that I am speaking of. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're making a website, a brand new website, and you are making it accessible, um, you may need to look into an accessible theme. Um, you may look into WCAG conformance, but there's no plugin that's going to take care of accessibility. Um, 
he also adds in the u.s anyone can sue anything anyone over anything there's no compliance action in any industry that can guarantee no one will sue the goal is to not make is not to make sure that you aren't sued the goal is to make sure you don't lose i disagree with that um the goal the objective is is to make sure that you don't have to deal with a lawsuit um, but he is right in the sense that anyone can sue anyone over anything uh, but if you have major website wcag conformant if your website does provide meaningful access at that point you are going to be in a better position to combat any claims of non-compliance um, if you contract with a professional or mediation company and they certify your site as accessible then you have a pretty obvious argument that you have made best faith efforts well that's going to depend because it's going to depend on who you contract with and um, how reputable they are I talked about this a few days ago in my certification video. It really does depend on it, it, the certification itself is not is what's so valuable. It's the work that the certification represents. So having certification, there are a lot of different um, companies and sellers that will give you certification, but you have to ask yourself, what value does it actually hold? If the if it's certification coming from an overlay widget company, there's no value here because they're just certifying that they basically have, you have a widget installed, you know, and that it may have changed, but for many years, that was the case. Um, so it really depends. Um, it's not necessarily that you have certification is that your, your website is free of accessibility issues. And so you really need to look at the underlying work that goes into the certification. So that is what is important. You want to work with a provider who is thorough, meticulous, regimented, and they are going to work through your website until it is free of accessibility issues for all of the pages in scope. And then so I'm going to skip through several of the comments. Uh, another comment for real, it's frustrating when widely used plugins and themes aren't generating ADA compliant code at this point. Um, they're getting at WCAG uh, conformant code. Um, and yes, I, I've come across numerous plugins and themes. Um, even if the if even if they talk about accessibility, even if, even if they say they are WCAG conformant, um, what I have found is that some are not. And so you really have to go through and you have to be very meticulous in which one you choose and you have to really research. Um, and even if you've researched well, you may come across an accessibility issue later on. I have personally experienced this multiple times where um, I have to, um, in a sense, hire my team to help me with the plugins and themes I'm using because I find an accessibility issue um, with the plugins and themes. Um, let's see, let's just keep going down. Uh, let's see, the, there, there's another comment. The thing is, there's not really a switch for ADA compliance. There are things you can do to bring it in, uh, line, in line with WCAG guidelines and things you can do to make it harder to be sued. But ADA compliance isn't really a switch of not compliant is compliant. You'll notice that any legitimate plugins use very careful language. Um, okay, so I, I mostly agree with what he's saying, but I don't think that's necessary. But you do need to you do need to think of ADA compliance in terms of WCAG conformance. And if you think of that, then you get to this point where you're not thinking of it so much as, hey, will this make me ADA compliant or will it not? We need to think of, are we fully WCAG conformant? And then if you're aware of the web content accessibility guidelines and everything that goes into them, you will understand what this comment is getting at when he's saying that this isn't really a binary, is compliant, non-compliant. We can get to following best practices for compliance, which be, would be full conformance, um, but it takes a while to get there. Um, let's see. Um, then he also adds, that all said, you can either scan your site with a tool that will give you a list of issues, which you'll then manually fix, and he provides the example of WebAIM, or you can get a plugin that adjusts your site for you. He uses the example of UserWay. It sounds like the plugin route is your best bet right now, but be aware that they change your site's layout, etc. So you really need to test thoroughly. Um, okay, so he goes on, but the point here is that he. Um, he adds UserWay as a plugin. So UserWay, again, I'm not saying overlay widgets to me are separate from plugins because these are widgets. Even if they may come in plugin form, uh, what we're looking for here are Word, we're, we're, we're looking at WordPress plugins. So an overlay widget is not the subject. And no, 
um, the best bet is not an overlay widget that will provide a menu of settings that someone can adjust. This is not going to make your website accessible and it will not make your website ADA compliant. Um, and overlay widgets have proven that they do not prevent lawsuits. We have seen hundreds, literally hundreds of lawsuits that are uh, where a website owner has been sued despite having an overlay widget installed. Someone writes, check out Accessibility. Absolutely not. Uh, someone writes, uh, they're just complaining about the lawsuits. Uh, we have another comment. I spend a lot of time working on getting sites to be ADA compliant. It's hard for me to, to see a WordPress site ever being 100% ADA compliant unless you develop the theme yourself. Uh, no, I disagree with that. You can make a website fully WCAG conformant. Um, and then, yeah, that's it for that comment. Um, being ADA compliant can be a templating issue and or a content issue. You need to find out what makes it fail compliance and address all of these issues. So this is what this is what that one comment was alluding to is really people are just misusing the word compliance because we're saying compliance as if something is or it is not. And it's really like we have to look at um, the individual thing that we are talking about and whether it conforms to the web content accessibility guidelines. And then, you know, when we look at everything holistically, does our website follow best practices for ADA compliance? Um, yes, it does or no, it doesn't. But even then, we're looking at the meaningful access standard because full WCAG conformance is not necessary for compliance. It's a best practice for compliance. But what we need to do is we need to provide meaningful access. So what this is getting at is just because we have a few accessibility issues does not mean that they prevent uh they, they they create a barrier to access so um that is why we have um, more of a gradient in the discuss this discussion rather than a yes or a no but we do know if we are fully wcag conformant that is going to be a best practice for compliance all right um someone writes there's so much going on with making a website ad compliant unless you're a developer you may need to hire externally for this you definitely will you have to have development uh, ex, a de de development skill set on your side to make sure that the, that you can make a website fully WCAG conformant. Um, let's see. So continuing on, different countries have different accessibility acts. You can't be 100% compliant. Why do you want to go the easy way out? Um, this is an unhelpful comment. Yes, there are different laws for accessibility around the world. Uh, but guess what? Material compliance for all laws, it comes down to WCAG conformance. So if you can, you know, some laws will actually wholesale incorporate the web content accessibility guidelines. Other laws will have more nuanced standards. But usually everything uh, revolves around the web content accessibility guidelines. Uh, but you, um, you know, having different accessibility laws, you know, then you're just looking at the administrative requirements for those laws and not the material compliance portion of that. Someone writes, no, there is no plugin, uh, but there's no developer company or magic sauce either. ADA compliant is a bunch of recommendations that may or may not apply to any website or page and following every single one of them doesn't guarantee you that some, some troll won't sue you. Um, so this is mostly a bad comment. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're fully WCAG conformant, someone, a, a lawyer could uh, potentially sue you and not have looked at your website. But again, if you have done everything, what are they going to claim, right? This is something that's going to be easy for us to dismiss. And it's unlikely that a lawyer would pursue that. Um, someone writes, no, there's no plugin that can make a website ADA compliant. Can they help? Sure. Can they also hinder? Yes. Um, mostly unhelpful comment. There are some plugins that are helpful for accessibility and they do some things within the WordPress dashboard or within the WordPress framework that can help. So there are some plugins that can benefit. Um, but, you know, in a sense, is he right? Can they help? Sure. Um, can they also hinder? Sure. They can hinder if you are using a bad plugin. So if you're using an overlay widget as a plugin, yes. Or if you're using a plugin that is deceptive or doesn't understand accessibility itself, yes. Um, no, a plugin can't a plugin can't just make a site compliant. How big is the site? There are plugins like Bricks that can be made accessible easier than others. Um, have you had an audit to identify the issues you need to fix? 
there is no such thing as an ADA compliant site because the government has not published an official policy. Yes, technically that is true, but we know what people are getting at. There are standards that have been suggested. You mean the web content accessibility guidelines and likely to be adopted, but it hasn't happened yet. Next, you don't need to be 100% perfect. You need to make a reasonable effort. The grifters that are suing companies are looking for a quick settlement. They are not interested in going to court to fight for a settlement, especially if the target has any sort of defense. Unless you are a huge company with deep pockets, you are pretty safe with any sort of effort. That's definitely not true. Um, they've been in and out. Uh, mostly I've agreed with what they've written, but uh, definitely not this last part. Small businesses are being sued all the time. With that said, your best bet is one of the ADA plugins? Absolutely not. None of them are perfect, but all of them show you are making an effort. No, they don't really show an effort. They show that you went out and installed a, an, a plugin. Think of it as a deadbolt on your front door. It's not going to stop someone who really wants to get in, but it will discourage someone looking for unlocked doors. It doesn't. It actually sometimes encourages uh, lawsuits. Pick a service and go with it. We use Accessibility for our clients. This makes sense. You know, you get into this 100% perfect thing. Um, and that's what, you know, that's how some of the, some accessibility companies get, get away with selling automated products for ADA compliance. They'll tell you this does a lot, but it's not 100% perfect. Okay, well, you are actually very far from 100% perfect. You may be closer to 0% um, perfect. So, uh, no, no ADA plugins. And again, we have this conflation of plugin and overlay widget. And I've talked about that. Check for Google Speed Insights and look for accessibility. That is, I mean, that's just, I mean, using Google Lighthouse is fine. Google Lighthouse is a fine scan, but that's really only a start. Um, as a business owner and developer that has actually done quite a few online stores and websites ADA compliant, I can tell you that no plugins exist that automatically do this contact someone with experience in such work to help out solid advice okay so i've run through a number of the comments and um i i went through these because this is a, what a lot of people ask about and a lot of people are confused about so i went ahead and responded to these questions if you need help with ada compliance you can hire me for consultation i will include a link uh, to hire me for consultation in the description i will also include a link to my ada compliance course this will help you understand what accessibility issues are claimed the most in litigation and how to uh, find, these find these issues, fix these issues, as well as prioritize these issues so that you work on improving accessibility as you redu reduce your risk of a lawsuit because um, there, really, there really are certain issues that plaintiff's lawyers key in on. Um, and then as far as accessibility services, I offer ex services through accessible.org. Um, so I will include a link uh, to those services in the description. But for now, um, to summarize this, going over this thread, there is no plugin that can make your website ADA compliant. 